I wonder if you have any news for me today, any good news. None, none at all? Does anybody out there have any good news? We're here! We're here. That is always good news every week. Well, I, um, I, we had a, oh, we're getting summoned down to the, here, here he comes, here he comes, here he comes, it's Cooper. Now, you all know, last week, the, last week, there was a big board here that said good news. We have moved that out into the main entrance of the church, and there are sticky notes there. And so if you come to church with good news on Sunday morning or any time during the week, I want you to put that good news up on that board and keep sharing it. Now, today in worship, we are going to hear a church word a whole bunch of times, and that word is holy. Can you say holy? Holy. Holy. Holy means really special and awesome and wow. Holy, holy, holy. I want you to count the number of times you hear the word holy in church today, okay? And uh, a little bit of a spoiler, in the first hymn, we're going to say it a whole bunch. We're going to say it a whole bunch. So I want you to count how many holies and listen for that word that means really special and awesome and wow and count those holies as we worship. Now I am going to pour the water now to start our service and we are going to hear holy in the words that I say while I pour. So that you're going to get us head, us a head start here with one, two, three holies. And after we pour the water, Miss Pat is going to play the prelude and y'all can go back to your seats. Sound good? Yes. From the prophet Isaiah. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of God's glory.
Friends, grace to you and peace and welcome to worship here at Edgewood Presbyterian Church and on Zoom if you are at home on this fifth Sunday after Epiphany. Uh, I had a f- several folks ask me this morning how it was to have some time off, and I have to tell you it was wonderful. Uh, but I did miss you all so much. I told uh, Don Hagen before the service that last Sunday was the first Sunday in, in about two years where I felt fully relaxed on a Sunday morning. It was really wonderful. And I know she's not here, but uh, I give deepest gratitude for the Reverend Elizabeth Goodrich, who was with you last Sunday. Um, it's good to have good friends. Friends, we have been gathered here, we have poured water, we have heard beautiful music. Maybe there is a stirring in your heart already. I invite you now to please rise in body or spirit and join Lynn in the responsive call to worship. Heaven and earth declare God's glory. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord. And in the temple, God's people cry. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord. God asks, Whom shall I send? Jesus says, follow me and share in my work. The Holy Spirit gathers each one of us for worship. Let us pray. Holy God, earth and heaven reverberate with your glory and humans and angels alike sing your praises. Open our minds to your breathtaking work in the world, even as you call us to spread the good news of Jesus Christ, our mentor and savior, in whose name we pray, amen.
Please be seated. Friends, we have come here with burdens that are too great to bear alone. We have come here seeking authenticity and honesty and to join in the work of bringing peace to a trembling world. And so we humbly offer our own truth to the God of everlasting love. Let us join our voices together now in a prayer confessing our brokenness. God, who calls us to share good news and to serve our neighbors, we often ignore that call. We fear what you will ask of us. We worry that we are not enough. Call us again and transform us. Give us new life in your spirit so that we may live lives that bear fruit and give glory to you, our rock and our redeemer. Hear now the silent stirrings of our hearts. Those who trust in the Lord will renew their strength. They will rise up to fly like eagles. They will run and not be weary. They will walk and not grow faint. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven and restored to new life. Let us pray. Creator of all that is in the heavens and on the earth, quiet the murmurings of our hearts and still the anxiety of our spirits so that we can hear your wisdom in all its rich variety. And in hearing, let that deep wisdom sink into our lives so that we may joyfully follow your call to follow in all we do and say, amen. In chapter 15 of the first letter to the Corinthians, we hear Paul telling of a multitude of witness to the risen Christ. Listen for God's words to us. Now I would remind you, siblings, of the good news that I have proclaimed to you, which you in return received, in which you also stand, through which also you are being saved, if you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you unless you have come to believe in vain. For I have handed on to you as of first importance what I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, although some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as, one, as to one untimely born, he also appeared to me, for I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I work harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim, and so you have come to believe. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks. Psalm 138 is traditionally attributed to King David. It is an individual's song of thanksgiving for God's intervention. Join me as we read these ancient words responsively. I give you thanks, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before all other gods, I sing your praise. I bow down to your holy temple and give thanks to your name, for 
On the day I called, you answered me. You increased my strength of soul. All the rulers of the earth shall praise you, for they have heard the words of your mouth. They shall sing the ways of the Lord, for great is the glory of the Lord. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you preserve me against the wrath of my enemies. You stretch out your hand, and your right hand delivers me. The Lord will do all this for my sake. Your steadfast love, O Lord, and your strength. Do not forsake the word of your hands. Holy wisdom, holy word. Thanks be to God. The reading from the Hebrew scriptures today is an overwhelming vision described by the prophet Isaiah. Let us listen for what the Spirit is saying to the church today. Isaiah writes, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a, on a throne, high and exalted. And the, the hem of God's robe filled the temple. Seraphs were stationed around God. Each had six wings. With two they covered their faces, and with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is filled with God's glory. The pivots on the thresholds shook at the voice of those who called. And the house was filled with smoke. And I said, woe is me, I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a glowing coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send and who will go? for us. And I said, here am I, send me. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Wow, what a wild scene Isaiah has witnessed, huh? He is in the temple. And so is God, or at least the very bottom of God's robe. God's presence is so immense that only the, the fringe fits inside the largest building that Isaiah has ever seen. Keeping watch are seraphs, seraphim. Now, aside from Isaiah telling us that they had six wings, we don't really know what seraphim look like. But their name has something to do with, with fire and or 
serpents. So I'll let you decide whether it's a six-winged fire monster or flying serpents that you want haunting your dreams tonight. The seraphim are, are covering themselves with their wings out of humility, maybe, or, or to protect themselves from all this holiness. And they sing out in praise. They sing out with voices that make the door frame quake in the temple. I have to imagine this didn't sound much like the heavenly choir, the angels singing to the shepherds on Christmas about the newborn Jesus. It sounds kind of terrible and terrifying. The place fills with smoke as they shout to one another, holy, 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 holy. The architecture isn't the only thing trembling here. Isaiah suddenly seems to wish he could be anywhere but in the temple. Oh Lord, I am in trouble. I did not prepare for this. I'm not worthy to be anywhere near this situation. And here I am in the literal presence of my God. It's all too much. I could die. Isaiah hadn't done the rituals to prepare for worship in the temple, much less a first-hand audience with the Almighty. A being such as he doesn't belong in this scene with the flying serpent fire monsters and the hem of God's robe flowing. Isaiah doesn't know what to do. He doesn't know what's expected of him. He doesn't belong here. He doesn't know the liturgy. This scene isn't meant for him. I walked just over a mile from my dorm room to number six Eddy Street, the red front door of First Lutheran Church of Waltham, Massachusetts. I was a junior at Brandeis University, and as I stepped out of the bright autumn morning and crossed the threshold into the building, it occurred to me that this was the first time in my life that I had entered a church without one of my parents. I hadn't told them or anyone else what I was up to that morning, walking to church. As is my habit, I was 10 minutes early for the service. And the usher, who I'm sure was just as kind as Don Hagen, handed me a worship folder and tried his best to greet me, but I quickly nodded and tried to avoid eye contact at all cost. I sat down in a pew way in the back and I buried my nose in that Lutheran hymnal. The pastor was up front making final preparations for worship. He looked up and I could feel him spot me. Out of the corner of my eye, I saw him bounding down the aisle toward me. Oh Lord, how did I do something wrong already? I wish my dad or my mom were here. I am in trouble. I did not prepare for this. I have upset the pastor. I don't belong here. I am not worthy to be anywhere near any of this. I could die. My knees were trembling. Good morning. My name is Tom. I'm so glad you're here. Oh. Within six months, I was teaching Sunday school at First Lutheran Church of Waltham, Massachusetts. And a year later, Pastor Tom Mail was the very first person to ask me if I had considered going to seminary. I laughed in his face and told him, no, never. It would be several years before I realized that for the pastor of a small but vibrant church, a college student stumbling in the door on a Sunday morning was better than winning a Super Bowl pool. But before I knew that, I felt so out of place, 
so out of place. And that pastor and that congregation were such gracious hosts. They helped me find my way through the liturgy and the hymnal and meeting people. They invited me in and they put me to work. I know some of you weren't quite that fortunate when you found yourselves feeling out of place in a church or feeling that you didn't belong. Some of you were even told that you weren't worthy. You shouldn't be there. Or that there was no room for you unless you fixed yourself somehow. But that is not how the God of such astounding, holy immensity and these otherworldly fire serpents, that's not how they treat the terrified prophet. A seraph scoops up a hot coal from the altar and presses it to Isaiah's lips. I think that's the 8th century BC version of leaning over to show someone where we are in the worship folder or how to find the right hymn. Helped out by this seraph, Isaiah is prepared and able to be fully present for this awesome scene. He has shown up. He's heard the first hymn sung by the seraphim, holy, holy, holy. He's confessed and he has been pardoned. It's like he went to church. And now it's time for the message. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send and who will go for us? Now, Isaiah could only see the hem of God's robe, but he can hear God's voice clearly. This man who was looking for a sinkhole to be swallowed up into just a moment ago, now having been blessed and welcomed, he discerns the very voice of the God of his ancestors, and he doesn't cower or quake, but hears in the holy question from God an invitation. And Isaiah responds, here am I, send me. He doesn't even ask what the job is. What is he being sent out to do? He just, know that God, he just knows that God needs somebody for something. And it turns out to be a grisly assignment for Isaiah, at least at first. Our reading stops at verse eight. I dare you to read the next few verses after worship. God's gonna send Isaiah with oracles of judgment in order to tear down some things that need tearing down among God's people. It's not fun, this call, at least at first. But later, the prophet will also get to say things like, words we know so well, the people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep, deep darkness, on them light has shined. And he'll get to proclaim, the wolf shall live with the lamb, the leopard shall lie down with the kid, the calf and the lion and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. And he'll get to promise that God will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. God will swallow up death forever. He'll get to pray aloud, comfort, O oh comfort my people, says your God. And a voice cries out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. And those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Thank God that Isaiah got to say all those wonderful things that we Christians love to hear. I wonder what makes you tremble. 
Few of us get the jaw-dropping scene of God's presence that Isaiah received in his vision in the temple. And we Presbyterians are not much for pyrotechnics in worship, but we are pretty good with words. Words spoken in prayers, words sung in hymns, words poured out in hope or cried out in despair. Maybe that makes you tremble. Or knowing that God is with us, knowing that God is with us through the wild, audacious, impractical grace of someone whose only connection to us is a shared faith, that can be enough to rattle the bones. Lately, most of the trembling I've felt has been in anger. Anger and along with it, a connection to Isaiah in feeling inadequate to the task of doing anything about the things that are making me angry. The anger makes me tremble. The inadequacy makes me tremble. Here we are in 2022, and on top of an endless pandemic that's been fed by weaponized ignorance and a complete disregard for neighbors. On top of that, we are somehow still banning books in these United States. And not just books, but with them, history that is uncomfortable and inconvenient for white Christian Americans. Meanwhile, new war is, is brewing in, alongside the cauldrons of Racism is both personal and political. We who seek to follow Christ, Creator, and Holy Spirit, we need to understand that God, God's call to us will certainly include some judgment oracles and some tearing down in addition to the joyful words of comfort and peace. Well, y'all, we have come into the presence of God together. We have offered praise. We have confessed our struggle to keep God's peace, and we have rejoiced in forgiveness. We have read God's word. We have been prepared. Soon we will approach the table and break bread together as a community, seeking to recognize Christ in one another and ourselves. We will be fed. We will pray again and sing again and be blessed again. We have been invited. We know the invitation for, is for us, and so we will say, here I am, and we will be sent. And if we've been paying attention at all, it will make us tremble just a little bit. It will make us tremble because the life of good news, the life of the peace of Christ, the life of holy, holy, holy justice is kind of overwhelming. But the truth is there's very little chance that a pool of quicksand will suddenly open up around us every time we hear holy, holy, holy. It turns out that we are the ones that God calls. Day and night, week to week, generation to generation, this relentless God sees in us a path to reconciliation and abundance and a future filled with hope. So tremble, people of God, and then respond with good news for our God to hear. Amen.
In the Gospel according to John, Jesus says, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Let us all now share the peace of Christ with one another. The peace of Christ be with you all. All right, as y'all find your seats, I'm going to share some announcements for the day. Uh, after worship, we will have both our adult classes, our joy class, which meets down the hall and on Zoom, and our worship reflection circle out here in the Northex. And today is the return of our elementary Sunday school class. Uh, Ms. Judy Green is offered to be our teacher for now, and we've got a wonderful uh, lesson plan uh, surrounding love for this month of February. So uh, kids, you can gather in the classroom across from Pastor Joe's office, the one with the mountains painted on the walls. Um, and thank you, Judy, for jumping on in. During that Sunday school hour, the choir will gather here for uh, some brief practice, and uh, then the Feed Your Neighbors team will get things started upstairs. They will get things started during the Sunday school hour, so if you were planning to leave but can pitch in, please run up to the kitchen, and they will continue after the Sunday school hour, so if you want to go to Sunday school and then want to help, that uh, you will still be needed in the kitchen. We're a little short-handed today, so please do help us uh, pack those lunches and get things ready to go. This afternoon, BYG meets, our Birmingham Youth Group meets at 4 o'clock down, just down the road a bit at Shades Valley Presbyterian Church. Uh, we continue our study of Matthew 25, and as part of that effort, next Sunday on Super Bowl Sunday, we are gathering from 4 to 5, four to five down at Shades Valley, but we want our youth to bring uh, brand new pairs of socks that we're going to donate to uh, folks whose feet need warming during this winter season. The rest of the week is all our normal stuff. On Tuesday evening, our U Kirk Birmingham team will, will be here uh, for dinner and then go off and have some fun. Um, on Wednesday, our uh, Wednesday Bible study at 6.30 is wrapping up the Gospel of Luke this week. And if you have not been here for the first 21 chapters, that's okay. Show up Wednesday as we hit the climax, the 20 chapters 22 through 24, um, the arrest, the death, and the resurrection of Jesus uh, on Wednesday at 6.30. And then Friday at 7 a.m., our Friday morning group meets after a couple of weeks off. We are starting a new book. This is a good time to uh, join on in on a Friday morning. The book is called In Defense of Kindness by the Reverend Bruce Reyes Chow. All right, we have several prayers collected in the, uh, that have been sent in this morning. Amy Crow asks for prayers for comfort for Judy Parsons, a family friend dealing with kidney failure. Thank you, Amy. We will certainly keep Judy and her family in prayer. Uh, we have a prayer from the Reisingers, I believe, to guide the surgeon's hand and calm fears on Wednesday. And I think this is from Shannon. My friend Kay's brother, Sammy, has COVID pneumonia and is on a ventilator. Gosh, it just keeps going. We'll, we will, uh, of course, pray for Sammy and Kay and uh, all connected there. Uh, Christy Bratton asks us to pray. Uh, her neighbor's brother is in the hospital, and so we will keep him in prayers. Absolutely, Christy and Cooper. And then uh, a prayer request uh, for the Venom Volleyball Club from Goodyear, Arizona. Several members of their team who were in a tragic car accident Friday traveling to a club tournament. One player lost their life. We'll pray for that team and uh, that whole community impacted by that. Friends, with those prayers gathered, let us turn to our God asking for more blessing. Let us pray. Holy One, we pray in order to feel your presence in this time of disconnection, of distance, of longing, of weariness. We ask you to overwhelm us with grace, 
to overwhelm us with patience and wisdom and courage, that we might be sustenance for the ones among us who need to be reminded or told for the first time that they are beloved. We pray for this congregation that we might be emboldened in our witness to your immense welcome. We pray, O oh God, for the communities to which we belong, that they might selflessly seek the welfare of neighbors. O oh God, we pray for our nation and our world that we may be surprised by an outbreak of peace and compassion. And we pray for ourselves that we might each hear your call to build up your reign of belovedness and find the strength to whisper aloud, here am I. God of grace, we lift to you the prayers on our hearts, those we have named and those that we struggle to name. Grant us the refuge of the hem of your robe as we face the challenges great and small that we will encounter. Remind us that in Christ Jesus, that in your Holy Spirit, that in you and in the love of our church family, we never walk alone. Amen. It's my duty to remind you that you can give your offering to this church online in various ways that are on your worship folder and on our website or via the offering box at the back of the church. Gathering God, you create us and redeem us. You call us by name, and we are precious in your sight. This good news overwhelms us with joy. With gratitude, we give you all that we have and all that we are. May these gifts be expressions of your great delight for your people in all the places of the earth. Amen.
Just as a reminder, when the bread has been broken and the cup has been poured, I'll invite you to come down via the center aisle and I'll remind you that the white cups, the ones that are not the clear plastic, but the white paper cups have the gluten-free option. So please uh, leave those for those who require it. Friends, this is the joyful feast of the people of God. They will come from east and west and from north and south and sit at table in the kingdom of God. According to Luke, when our risen Lord was at table with his disciples, he took bread and he gave thanks to God and he broke it. And suddenly their eyes were opened and they recognized him. We seek to recognize Christ in one another and in ourselves at this table. This table that's not Edgewood's table, not a Presbyterian table. It is Christ's table and you are invited. You are welcome to this feast. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Blessed are you, O Lord our God. The heavens tell your glory, and we cry, Amen. Your word goes out through all the earth, bringing life and joy to all. Therefore, we join with heavenly choirs and the faithful of every time and place, as the people say, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you, O God, and blessed is your Son, Jesus the Christ. You anointed him with your spirit to bring good news, to set captives free, to restore sight, to liberate the oppressed, and to announce the year of your favor. Remembering your goodness and grace, O God, we offer ourselves to you with gratitude as we share this joyful feast. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and upon this bread and cup. Make us one in the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord. As members of Christ's body, baptized in one spirit, teach us to honor and to care for one another. And clothe us all with your grace. Through Christ, with Christ in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor are yours, almighty God, now and forever. And now with the boldness of the children of God, we pray the prayer Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power in the glory forever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus, on the night of his arrest, took bread. And after giving thanks to God, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, he took the cup saying, this is the cup of the new covenant, sealed in my blood, shed for the forgiveness of sin. Whenever you drink of it, do this in remembrance of me. Every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the saving grace of our Lord until he comes. These are the gifts of God for you, the people of God. Come now to the welcome table.
Whether you are at home joining with us in this sacrament or whether you are here in the pews, I invite you now to break your bread and to partake, saying, I recognize Christ in you. And then to lift your cup and a holy toast, saying, my heart is burning for God's people. Let us pray. Loving and gracious God, from east and west, from north and south, you have gathered us at your table. You have called us your beloved. You have fed us from your body. Transform us to be your body in the world and fortify us by your spirit so that we may serve you and our neighbors with great joy. Amen.
are standing, please be seated, except for kids who are going to join me for the, sermon, for the uh, charge from the steps here. Come on down. Here comes Cooper. All right, you got to save a spot for me. Thank you. Thanks, Eva Lee. It's good to see you. All right, y'all. Did anybody count how many times we said, oh, gee, of course you did. What number did you get? Like 80? Yeah. Okay. How many, what do, you, what do you think? Nine. Not, I was way more than nine. Anybody out there count? Yeah, I think it was, some, it was something in the 80s, probably. I mean, we had 19 just in the first hymn. We said, holy, 19 times. Thank you for counting, Eva Lee. If you heard our Bible story today, and if you did, I say you should go home and, and read it. Isaiah shows up on the scene and sees this immense vision of God. It's so, God is so very big, and there are these weird animals there flying and singing about how holy, holy, holy God is. God is. And Isaiah's response is to go, uh, I am not holy, holy, holy. A few weeks ago, we read a story uh, from the prophet Jeremiah. You know, these prophets, they like to tell the stories of when they got their jobs. And when God said to Jeremiah, you're going to go and, say, and tell people about me, Jeremiah said, I'm too young. Isaiah says, I'm not, ho I'm not holy. Jeremiah says, I'm too young. But God has a job for them anyway. God looks at us no matter how much we argue and says, no, no, no. You are holy, holy, holy. You are special, awesome. Wow, I'm very impressed with who you are. I'm so glad that I made you. You are pretty awesome. Look at all those holy, holy, holy people out there. Look at them. You know some of these people. They do amazing things for God. Look at the, the, the holy people behind us, Miss Amanda and Pat, who make such beautiful music, and Miss Lynn and Miss Stacy, who sing uh, with the choir each week. And look at the holy people on these steps. One, two, three, four. All of us, each of us, has work to do for God. Because God thinks that we are special, awesome, wow, holy, holy, holy. And so we are sent to love our neighbors and ourselves. Will you all pray with me before we bless the congregation? Yeah. Dear God, you are holy, holy, holy. We sometimes forget, but you say that we are holy, holy, holy. Send us now to share your love with this holy, holy, holy world. You love us, and we love you. Amen. All right, will y'all rise? You can stay here, or you can go back to your seat either way, and uh, rise in body or spirit for the charge and blessing. Are we ready? Friends, go out into the world in peace. Have courage. Hold on to what is good. Return no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak and help the suffering. Honor all people, love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Alleluia. Thank you for all your help, Corinna. Mm -hmm.